many large organizations that's quite flexible and has like a bottom up and top down approach mixed something so i think there's some kind of like adapting this to the dow structure is going to put us on a, a similar scalability footing as like the biggest tech companies in the world but with decentralized architecture so yeah i guess i just see part of it is like the things you say and part of it is the things you do and yeah that's it yeah and i think i want us to there's almost like a blue skies like blank canvas with these things and I think we want to learn from the best practices in organizational design and I know like Jörn for example and, and Tracheoptrix is going to talk about this in the next session is the you know, some of the principles <clears throat> from organizational theory that should inform DAOs so we want to pick and mix everything but not necessarily wholesale adopt everything adopt something like I don't want us to pick something and a conventional organizational paradigm. I want us to create a new paradigm. And we, I, yeah, so I, I, this kind of idea of a blank slate of doing things different, of doing things better, and doing so in a much more collaborative way is something I'd like us to think about. But yeah, I've, I've not looked, I know the thing that Matt suggested there, I've not looked at it fully yet. But yeah, I'd look, I'd, I want us to pick out the best bits from conventional organization design but with the principle that it is going to be different. Decentralized organizations, it's almost oxymoronic. It's decentralized an organization shouldn't, in theory, work together. It's like almost the opposite principles. So the middle ground where these things meet is going to be super exciting. We just want to be there in the middle of it, building the stuff that's going to facilitate it to happen. Welcome to new people who've joined the group. We're just having a, a sort of very open chat about our branding and philosophy about how we're going to help people understand what it is we're doing. We've got a relatively complex set of technologies that are being designed for something that is just emerging. So we're a very emerging tech. The whole of the crypto space is an incredibly emerging technology. It's very early. DAOs even more, but potentially profoundly important. And we're positioned to be right at the bleeding edge of that. But we need to help people understand that is the case the, of what we're building. And it's not an easy set of concepts to understand. So we're trying to find nice, simple ideas that will help bring more people on. Because DAOs are the sum total of their people. So how do we find more people and how do we land our messaging? So very open to ideas from anyone in the room who's got any. That's, that's an amazing sound. Yeah, I don't know how. I, I don't think it's anything to do with me. Oh, right. Yep. I, no, no, I don't think know. so. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, Alex. I think we've lost you again. Duran? Yeah. Is your mic on or are you away from your mic? You probably have to adjust your sensitivity a little bit. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. I don't know what's going on. I think maybe somebody else should should continue if there's a few people there. Let's try again now. We hear it now. Just keep the microphone there. Yeah. Well, I'm okay. Doing now doing that. I'll I'll just do that. So basically, the last couple of weeks, I've looked very superficially at the project. But one thing that stands out to me is this seems to be encouraging proper norms of behaviour in the community. In other words, a social governance seems to be offering people fairness and equitability, irrespective of how many tokens that they may hold. And there is a mechanism so that the whales cannot unduly impact the entire governance, which seems to be which seems to be the problems with many of the other projects that are going on. They just seem to be gained. And ultimately that's their undoing. So I think in terms of the branding, it reminds me of Confucianism in China. They always talk about the proper norms, the proper norms of behavior. So if you want to have a social cohesion, if you want to have many things in the community, that, that can only be done by uh, proper norms of behavior, proper standards. It's not the Wild West. We're, we're moving away from that. So I think I think this has to be this has to be the thing that can be branded at the outset that it's fairness, there's equitability, everybody has a voice, a true voice, and the system cannot be gained. So I think these are some of the things that 
ought to be said right from the outset. I think at the, at the now, I think we, the bubble has burst in Bitcoin. I think we hit 64,000 and we're at, now we're at 32,000. But in, in your in your message yesterday in decoding DeFi, did I hear it correctly? There are 400 rug pulls a day? 4,000. 4,000, my God. 4,000. I mean, not- you know, so that just shows you the amount of speculative mania which is in the market. Yeah. I, I think this this really important point, and actually is very much the, one of the core principles of what we're doing. I think that's definitely worth noting down, this kind of fairness and equitability. So that we're designing systems that are less plutocratic. Yeah, with, yeah. So that it's not just about who holds the most tokens. And we're I think we're as progressed, if not the most progressed in the space on building yeah, out yeah. token-weighted governance using our NFT systems and things like that, that that limit the impact that pure plutocracy can have. But more generally, it is about fairness. So our auction system is a fair launch system. And we shopped that around a bit. And what people wanted was pump and dumps at the time. So these IDO platforms that were all about trying to funnel a huge amount of demand through a tiny hole to pump the token price on listing, that was the game. And we just, we had a launchpad system that we didn't use for 11 months now, nearly 10 months that, that we just left to one side because we didn't want to be associated with that whole launchpad craze that just felt completely scammy. So it is very much one of our core values. And it's interesting you bring up Confucianism. And one of the sort of principles of that is that it's built on these kind of idioms that there's essentially phrases or little ideas that can, if you land the right message for them, can propagate for a thousand years. And, and I think yeah. it's one of the things that we wanted to hit at in our principles session, which we're going to do later on today, which is we want, want people to come One of the keys practice. with this long-term vision is to actually have users engaged for a longer amount of time. So it has to be interesting to, to come back to the info channels, to the Discord, mm-hmm. uh, there has to be an incentive to keep up with, with what the DAO is doing, but also uh, b- because it's quite a lot of information to educate somebody on, on, on the principles and the vision, and it takes time to mm. inform somebody on it. So you want them to be around for a long time. We do. The, ga- the, games we're, we're, the games at the moment are a good way to do this. Um, they I think are. It's a re- you really have to strongly focus on this engagement. Um, yeah. But also showing, really clarifying what this future vision is that we're building towards, and also maybe giving more concrete examples. So for everybody has different reasons and different ideas about how this could apply to something in the future. Um, yeah. So so you want people to, to to give them like small examples. So this is what it could be in the future. This is what it could be. This is what it could be applied for. Because we're we're far from there. It's going to take a, a long time. Uh, it's re- some really interesting points there. I think there's a, f- a few things that we've played around with a bunch of these kind of principles and ideas since the inception of the project. And one of them, this idea is participation is power, is one of the kind of important things. So that we want to build mechanisms that will reward people for sticking around and participating in the project. And that comes right down to who's taking part in the votes. So we've got this kind of vote mining idea where literally every vote will be will get you an allocation of tokens. So there's direct incentives. I know this is the principle of what tokens can do, is they build incentive alignment across a large group of people. So the direct incentives are super important, but also this principle of playing the long game. I was very surprised, or not that surprised, but a little bit disappointed with how short-termist everyone's approach to, to crypto was over the last year. And I think that's that's why that bubble popped, is because everyone had mm-hmm. sub-week, sub-day time horizons on their engagement with these projects. We picked up a lot of token flippers in the first phase of the project that have largely all gone. And we want people who think longer term. So I also think that's a, another really important point, this kind of think long term, because that's how you do win in crypto. Everyone I know who's done really well in cryptocurrency has just been in the game for a longer period of time. So yeah, thinking long-term, 
engagement was another brilliant word that you used and participation is another good sort of cluster of concepts I'd like us to be associated any other thoughts anyone any other ideas that they'd like us to be associated with just one thing uh, Nick Dr yeah. Nick uh, Confucian, uh, you know, Confucius saw the Tao when he became enlightened it's funny isn't it because the, the, it's very it's the collectivization so there's collectivist ideas or communitarian ideas is actually quite central to Chinese philosophy. Yes, yes. Over there, for sure. And it's about feeling without the kind of, it's collectivism without the top-down authoritarianism. Yes. Right? So that there's, we, in, until now, I, I've always been a bit of a socialist at heart, till recently, as anyone realised some of the flaw, flaws of the ideology. And the flaws of the ideology is it relies on central planning. But working together and building a kind of collective is incredibly powerful. So how do we get to this idea of collectivist ideology or collectivist thinking, collective intelligence, without the kind of, whilst maintaining the agency of the crypto gives you this kind of almost, you are an independent agent, you are free fundamentally. And I think that this is, you know, just, I like physical models. You know, so as people are like particles and they have attractions and repulsions to each other. So they have reasons for working together or hanging out together. They have a like natural desire to fuck off and do their own thing. And and so if you are going to organize, there needs to be some kind of attractive force that's involved or harnessed. And so the authoritarian government is one such attractive force. I think money is also a another attractive force. This is a, has a way of binding people together who maybe don't like each other or don't actually really want to work together, but then it creates a, a way for people to make more money by working together than by not. So I think there's like it, it, the word finances and finance.vote is like the first cryptocurrency was, your know, first blockchain project was a cryptocurrency because you needed a way to reward everyone for playing this this uh, crazy game and, and create that binding force so that we have one version of the Bitcoin blockchain and not. And then, so yeah, also religion is a popular way to bind people together. Religare, I believe, means to, to bind in Italian. So um, yeah, our shared belief system so like what do this is where we want to get with this principles thing that we're trying to get people to to align on over the next of the rest of the week and we're going to have votes on that so we what the principles that we want and then we can run an influence <coughs> vote and let people vote on what the most important principles are and i think that'll be a really important point for finding what our collective belief structure is and yeah there's there's that thing around bitcoin was made it's a money that was paid principally there to to pay miners to secure the network and for us, it's we've got this vote mining idea. We will emit tokens to people who vote and participate. So it's the mining, if you like, in our system, is participation, is collaboration. So it and it, we are moving into this social layer of blockchains. We've had a decade of just trying to make money, but the next layer is around social organization and how we actually start bringing humans into these games rather than just automated software. So yeah, I, I think that's. What's our collective belief structures, and but ultimately it's about freedom and also aligned incentives is an important concept as well. I think a really big part of the DAO should also be education, since we are yeah. such an early, an early adapter. You want people to be knowledgeable about where we are heading, about the concepts, about the choices that we're making. So this education part of it, I feel like it has, should have quite a big weight in the whole and the total part of the DAO. I agree with you completely. I, and, and it's there as a fundamental principle. This is why we're doing this kind of decoded DeFi series. I, I've spent the last decade doing curriculum design in universities. We can have a master's level course if we wanted to. In fact, we could have a whole curriculum from the lowest level to PhD level if we wanted to. There's enough content and ideas and concepts going on here to real build a sort of really full curriculum out of this and if we wanted to dedicate a good amount of resources to that we could do and it is i want people to one of the things that's come up as a kind of community sentiment is this when everything was crashing and, and horrible we were actually one of the few fun places to hang out in crypto and i want us to keep that philosophy of whatever happens in the market this is going to be a good place to be and I think the education dynamics are a really strong angle on that one. 
Yeah, definitely. I think gamification, education, and like incentivizing. Uh, yeah, step so step by step process of educating yourself. I think that would also be very valuable yeah. addition. Definitely. I, I think there's a section in our white paper which I call it the gamified school of decentralized finance. And I think there's there is ways to do our education dynamic um, and reward people for doing it as well. So we've thought about this in the past where our little NFT ID, they can aggregate other reputation points. So at the moment, we've got this very crude reputation factor. And it's one of the first reputation factors in crypto. And this whole reputation layer thing is going to be super important because it allows you to be treated differently as a pseudonymous account. So it allows you to build decentralized identity, and that's super important. But we can nuance those tokens with other things. So, for example, we could, if we got people to share their IDs in this room, we can assign participation points for people for just being here and, and taking part. And we can also in, in, you know, involve educational dynamics into it. So if you can prove that you understand this stuff, then you've got more say in the DAO, for example. So there's a, definitely a whole trajectory out of that. Anyone else got any other thoughts on things that we should associate our brand with, things that you would like the sort of finance boat ecosystem to, to be related to? I know that um, you're kind of thinking magic internet money right now. And I think we've briefly touched before, and you definitely have with the London dot vote. But I, I, I think like the concept of like democracy redesigned, I think is quite powerful for a lot of people because I think a lot of people can see that there's just, you know, not just cracks in Uniswap, there's cracks in everything, you know, up and down the existing system in real life. And I think people can really get behind the idea of democracy redesigned and they can immediately get what that means. Um, and linking that kind of thought process with ancient Greeks and what they, the assemblies that they used to hold and, you know, that startup approach to, to thinking and, and, and working together. Yeah, I completely agree. So we've used the phrasing digital democracies quite, quite a lot elsewhere. That, so our recent keynote, the DeFi Summit, built quite a lot, quite a heavy narrative around this idea of, of digital d democracy. And yeah, like you say, that the people viscerally understand the frailties of the current de democratic systems. Over the last, even just five years, we've had a hugely contentious referendum in the UK that was basically split down the middle and caused everyone fall out with one another we've had trump and the whole election fraud debacle and all that sort of stuff and we are actually building auditable voting technologies and the it's interesting because we could have gone down a really interesting line on the to the london for those of you who've missed this one if, if someone could share the report in the general channel of, that we we created on it's a really interesting read we went and got involved in politics very briefly during the london mayoral election where we, we got as many londoners with, as we could find in about two three day period give them a voting id nft and got them to do a quadratic vote and it was like the very ju literally just built influence that that week and so we literally just literally finished the first prototype of it and then went and used it with a bunch of people and it just created a very interesting dynamic around getting people to say what they actually think about these each of these issues and it's just an incredibly coherent feed of feedback from a group of people it has the potential to be a political tool it just scares me that whole thing because it's such a quagmire and the, and one of the reasons why I've steered it into this kind of like digital democracy is it's very difficult to disrupt centralized systems and it can just bring you a load of heat that you don't need. So I, I think we've got this kind of like blank digital space that's our own. We, we can build our own democracies here and no one can stop us, literally, and we can start afresh without being bogged down in anything. So in that report, I say that was a temporary foray into real world politics. Now we're going back to our digital worlds where we understand everything a little bit clearer and everything's in our control. But I, I do think I do love this idea of democracy being a, an important part of it. And that's very much what these are. They're actually direct democracies. 
So direct democracies are one where literally any participant in the system can materially change the system itself. And I think the closest thing to this in the real world is like Switzerland, where essentially like any citizen in, can propose a bill and it has the potential to be elevated into international policy. That's what we can be, direct democracies. So yeah, love that connection. And I think we should definitely do that. So it, is, and it really points in the direction that this is bigger than crypto. It's, this is blockchain. It is almost like an organizing principle more than a data structure. And and it also means that like a, the scope of our impact or the, the market size, if you will, is is much bigger than that of crypto. Yeah, and it just makes me think if it like we we keep talking about it a lot how it's much bigger than crypto, which is this is like the battle testing for a lot of these technologies to evolve into something much bigger. And it just makes me think like there could potentially, like when I envision a digital democracy, I imagine that the roles that you can play and uh, things that you could do, and it's not necessarily about all about yield farming or learning the economics behind it or you know the financial aspect of it, but you could be an artist and exist in a DAO, or you could be a writer and exist in a DAO. And I think we, we talked about this a little bit with potentially what our Discord could be, and it sounded like that was the direction we were wanting to go. Yeah, I think there's, it's an interesting one, you just made me think then, Joseph, it's so that we've, a lot of our systems are built around these kind of complex DeFi concepts and the, the, the necessary, the kind of finance, like domain, if you like, so the, by domain, it's what it is we're talking about, what is the focus, what is the, what's the, the sort of circle around the, the concepts that we're doing, and that, at the moment, that's finance. Right, so we've got this kind of DeFi bucket of concepts, and the principle was is the people using crypto at the moment are people in DeFi. Most of the MetaMask users are in DeFi. If we go and target people outside of this bubble now, I've seen many projects over the years aim for essentially like mass market use cases and then just die on the vine because they have just overshot the adoption curve. But even people within DeFi want to, to dream about those bigger ideas. And I think we've got this kind of brand tension, I think, is like, are we DeFi or are we bigger? I don't know what people's thoughts are. Should we define a tight scope around us building a decentralized financial systems for DAOs or should we broaden it out a little bit? I don't know what people think. You, you had a lot of feedback there. That was intense. Yeah, sorry, my boy. I couldn't <laughs> hear anything. It sounds like we're getting, it's like, yeah. I, I just, if you want to type wanted the, to the message, maybe so I can read my voice's message. Yeah. Or I just quickly wanted to bring up one thing that we were talking about in the, in the conversation we were having last night regarding just like the podcast and what that could be about and the themes of that. I think it's related because Nick was just bringing up how the main audience right now exists within DeFi and they're pretty like deep into it. And that's like the sphere that we've been dealing with and, and this question of are we DeFi focused or are we more than that? I think it's a pretty I think it's a pretty fundamental question that we should definitely figure out because uh, it's gonna be key to the branding and I think to the name even. Um, but I, I think there's a potential to because obviously crypto is this really nuanced thing and it's not it's actually not a lot of people are into crypto. It seems that way for some strange reason, but it's just really not the case. If you talk to most people, they have no idea what's going on with crypto. Or at least maybe they have some kind of surface level. But I think we we could have the potential to bring people into the crypto space, into the DAO space, into what we're working on from a very different perspective. And we touched on this last night of rather than bringing them in through the, oh, you can make a lot of money. It's, oh, you could actually change the way we organize civilizations. And like this would be people's entry point into crypto, into the economics behind it, into everything else that's going on here. One advantage of bypassing the money as the entry point is that people have a lot of strange and often I think language. voice. I'm sorry, we can't hear anything. There's a lot of crazy ideas about money floating around, you know, a lot of, uh, I think, dysfunctional ideas. And while I think it can be really, like, valuable for people to, you know, rehabilitate their relationship with money, I, like, this is an interesting other angle. If it's really about organizing ourselves. Does anyone know if my voice wrote a message somewhere that we can read? Yeah, on your point there, maybe. The, we've, 
there's a there's an interesting thing about our brand, which is we've a lot of people have said we're crazy for doing this, but we've got these almost satellite domains for each of these applications. So we want and we saw the value of this in that London experiment because we use the influence dot vote brand to present we I wrote to the current London mayor, the actual politicians, using the influence dot vote brand rather than five. So you're absolutely right, Joseph. The crypto bubble is tiny and it's super weird. If you talk about yield farming to anyone outside of even the DeFi bubble, like half nineteen percent of crypto doesn't understand it. You just alienate people. And so we presented influence.vote as a sort of separate construct and that helped us land it. People understand, oh right, you're a voting technology that uses, you know, blockchain. That's cool. And we didn't present at all to the fact that we've we've got a token and we've got a launch pad system and we've got a yield farming system. So I, I'm just wondering what are people's thoughts about how we do we try to bring everything into one big meta brand or do we allow things to have some of the applications to have almost separate sub brands? Can I just pipe in for for Lenny here in terms of what he said that he's, he said that he thinks we should focus on DeFi as the most active user base, expand to other industries as the crypto ecosystem evolves. And I'm, I'm actually with him on this. Like I think so there's one thing which is creating the next generations of tools for organizations to use in the future with a new organizational structure which we're going to be the leaders of but then the other piece is well it is actually really good and i say traditional real world startup techniques that you can use lean and agile and really narrow focus build tools that delight people and then once you've got them on board you can then look to expand that into other other domains essentially and grow with crypto so you can use the momentum of crypto to take you to places versus trying to create your own momentum and, and right now the momentum is in DeFi um, and that is the user base and it is a bit of weird it is a bit of a bubble but they are going to be the people most likely to pay for our services uh, Dr Nick can you hear me I can hear you I can hear you oh so right sorry I, I'm inclined to I'm inclined to think that where we are in terms of, we tend to be in terms, we, depending on the market cycle, the narrative will hold. What I mean by that is, is that if we go into a, if we go into a bear market for the next three to four years or one year or two year, or how, and I think we are in a bear market, then you're going to see the governance issues come to the forefront. Because in a bull market, everyone's making money and nobody cares about governance. So when it tips the other way, and that's when we're going to see the cracks in the governance. And I, I, I don't know much about it, but you were talking about I think there are other swap protocols like Aave and Synthetics and so on and so forth. So I think those people will likely come to need this type of social governance protocol. So I think that's just going to take its own that's just going to take its own time. As far as the other thing that you talk, talked about, you can have a sub brand and that sub brand does not need to be associated with crypto or DeFi. You mentioned that you wrote to the you wrote to the various candidates. I can't remember who you wrote to, Dr. Nick. Yeah, pretty much all the candidates in the election. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and you didn't mention you didn't mention anything about crypto or DeFi. Yeah. You just said this, this is a voting this is a voting governance technology. So I think that's how you play it. Whichever mm -hmm. whichever side needs a solution, you present it in that form. And, and the other side doesn't need to be brought into it. Yeah, and th something else that I think Joseph said that is was interesting that it's so we've got this influence platform which we're super excited about and it's part of our sort of governance. It will allow anyone, including you know, anyone with a YouTube channel with like a million subscribers or whatever, they could issue a million NFTs using that system and give everyone a vote. And yeah. it'd be completely free, potentially, because all we need is an Ethereum address. And then they can participate in a vote with that person. They don't need to know or be interested in finance for that to work. They would say, I just want to talk to my favorite YouTuber. What is a potential to adopt people into the, to the sort of financial revolution? 
if you like. And I saw someone else say this on Twitter yesterday, but it, it's like someone said they grew up wanting to, wishing that they were born in like May 1968, like during the sort of summer of love. And because it felt like the zeitgeist was malleable and like there was a revolution happening, and like you could change the world. And, and that's happening now, but within the crypto space, within the kind of like finance bubble, there is a revolution happening and there is radical change coming. And it is the stuff that we're building and, and that others are building in crypto that's probably going to make it happen. So there is a kind of like revolution dynamic there, but mostly people don't care. Mostly people just want to talk to their favorite YouTuber. But there is an adoption vector there. So I think what we've got is we're almost like casting the net outwards with a view to bringing them in. So if these people who like go and vote with their favorite YouTuber, they pick up an NFT and then they might find that NFT as a secondary market button. And now they've, they might, they've installed MetaMask. They've installed MetaMask. And, and if they vote in influence, they're going to pick up some FBT tokens. And now all of a sudden... They're part of the financial revolution. They don't even know it. And now if those tokens go up in value, they're going to be like interested in a little bit more. And, and this kind of adoption vector stuff is is interesting. I, I, I like that idea. It allows us to conceptualize, yeah, okay, we're a DeFi brand, but what we're going to do is cast a net out wider than that and drag people in. I think I, I like that idea. Yeah. And, and to and me, the, I, I, I think influence is the tip of the spear. It's... it's it has so much potential in it. It does, and it's we, like I said earlier, that, that I've saw lots of people try to set up in 2017. Hey, we're going to be a, a blockchain-based social media network, and they all failed, every single one of them. This allows us to to play essentially both sides of the pop here. We can stay. We're building these core DeFi projects and we're building infrastructure for DAOs at the bleeding edge of technology but we're also going to dabble in this kind of mass market dynamic as well without it jeopardizing the whole project. Any other thoughts on things that we want to align ourselves with? How do we sort of, how do we get more people into this idea that we're building the kind of future? I think this came up in a chat that we had a little while ago and the whole like we work in DAOs not to be a factory, but to get out of the factory. And in a discussion that we had yesterday, when we were thinking about the podcast, I was just talking about how there's this general feeling of frustration in the world, like people are fed up with the politicians not delivering their fed up at work. And so there's all these statistics coming out that are like, okay, post, and, and people are thinking about it now post pandemic as well. And I don't know if I can go back to work now, or maybe I need a more better work-life balance. And, and reevaluating that, I feel like that meets that desire or that frustration. Uh, and fitting that general theme, okay, this is more than just financial revolution. This is about yeah freedom but, and just next way our civilization is going to be. I'm really glad you brought that up. It's, yeah, this is one of my friends. He talks about just generally the kind of whole wage gig lifestyle of going to work for somebody who calls it the factory. doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're working for someone and you're grinding out just enough money to pay off your rent and put food on the table or maybe have one holiday a year, that's the factory. And what I, I think I tweeted this a while ago, but DAOs can be like side gig machinery where you can relatively risk-free get at, by working for some DAO in the evenings and doing bits and bobs, using whatever you're talented in, earn some more money from a treasury that could generate you exit capital to get like to get out and work on your own. And I think that's potentially super powerful. It's like the next generation of the gig economy, where instead of just being on a zero hours contract, you're gaining exposure to the upside to of, of these crypto networks that could give you financial freedom essentially. So I think that's a hugely important narrative. That So we've toyed with a lot of these ideas, and it's, we've got this work for a DAO uh, tagline that we've we picked up in the past that I think taps into that. Yeah, any, anyone else think, what, how else could we align with this kind of side gig idea? There's no two ways about it. A lot of reason why people turn up to DAOs is because they want to earn some money that can go up in value. People want the upside that comes with 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 tokens. 
Um, they don't just want to. They have to make some money, like uh, yeah. working for DAO. If you want to invest time in something like this, then you have to like not invest time in other things. So in a way, in the end, you have to be able to make some money if, if you if you want to get involved. That I think that's a almost a basic incentive in a way. Yeah, for, for people to be able to actually get invested. And also, I really like the idea of sketching this future idea of how it is for an individual to be part of, of like, how it is for an individual. How do you live when you're actually working for a DAO? Like, the freedom it gives you and your own decisions. And you don't even have to work for one DAO. There's, like, this, it could be this future ecosystem of different uh, organizations that you could uh, apply your knowledge. And, and that, that would create, like, this completely new idea of living and financing your your life i really like that idea i think it could be really cool to sketch that out to just to dream about what it could be like yes and that could be a fun video too it so could life there's the i don't know if any people are aware of the sort of digital nomad community like about five years ago i met like a group of roaming digital nomads who were just you know going from city to city for an entire year and they all had they, it was just this idea of being so liberated from the office that you could work anywhere in the world on pretty much anywhere, anything you wanted. And it's such a powerful, liberating idea. I'd certainly like us to think about a campaign around how you could come and how DAOs are a potential like way to <laughs> being able to be free from the office and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, very open to that idea. I, I, I like that angle a lot. I was talking to a friend the other day about about his work, and he's basically a graphic designer for unions, and he's talking about how there's like a union developing for graphic designers because uh, he's been approached to join and this kind of bits and pieces, and there's uh, there's all these other sort of like you say digital nomad type jobs that are in a sense becoming more unionized, not so much because it's more like the collective bargaining side of things and the ability to, to negotiate. Can't seem to hear anything. He can't hear me. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So, so more along that sort of collective bargaining side of things and um, the ability to, to, to organize great price discounts for like, you know, 100 people buying Microsoft Office is better than, you know, one type thing. And I started talking to him about DAOs and it's like, it's like, oh, wow, that's, these are the future of unions, aren't they? And I'm like, well, basically, yes. And one of the things they were doing was credit control for graphic designers so you would join this union and then they would have a team of credit controllers that would manage that for you so you'd pay them a fee but then they would manage all your credit control and payroll and all of those sort of things for you so there's that shared services type aspect as well sometimes people aren't always looking for a community but they are looking for someone that can handle x for them and they'd be happy to pay for that for them. i think if the community came with that then you know that's that's a relatively straightforward thing. And that's, you know, and I said to him, well, look, credit control is basically smart contracts. That's that's what that's going to be replaced by in the future. And he didn't realize that concept was something I explained that. And it was like, God damn, it's going to eat everything, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, it's it's inevitable, essentially. So these are things that we could talk to people about without having to say the word crypto or DeFi, but they would get and they would pay for because they need that support if they're sole trader. Yeah. I think that's, I have never thought of the union idea. That's a wild idea. Wow. It, it, it is. And I'm quite aware that DAOs have this, there's this kind of ideological concept called anarcho-syndicalism, which is pretty much where DAOs are heading, which is this non-nation state collective action stuff. And they have the potential to, if you've got consensus and you've got collectives, it ends up in that sort of, of area and so certainly thinking about what can you achieve better as a group than you could on your own is a really interesting and one of these repulsive forces in a group of people is the cost of communication the difficulty it's yeah. hard to speak it's hard to listen and then once you have 300 people you need to speak and listen to, then it's, the cost just climbs. So there's a kind of a concrete way of framing what we're doing as reducing communication costs for organizations around important decisions. Yeah, I think there's something really powerful there. And it's also it's super disruptive. And 
I think when people start to understand how disruptive it could be if people actually could collectivize and the way they can collectivize is through consensus like we agree that this is what we want and what and like we is a large number of people we just don't have any mechanisms for that at the moment and i don't think current democratic systems empowers people in that way so yeah this kind of collective action thing is really interesting but also dangerous it's uh, it's an interesting angle that's why class is important because as soon as we start doing anything of importance like syndicates could mm-hmm. um, i mean the powerful thing about syndicates versus versus unions is that syndicate syndicates paid people to strike if yeah. you pay people for not going to work this is really powerful and this is why privacy is important because this is this is where uh, things can go really wrong if you organize such things. Yeah, pay people, pay people for not working at some company. That's uh, that's top. that that would be amazing. I mean, wow. Hey, you know, Monsanto employees, here's a thousand dollars if you just don't go to work. The, uh, okay. Yeah. So 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 just we're rapidly completing our uh, scalability milestone for influence and but privacy is the next big item on that so I just to let everyone out I agree yeah and the, the other thing that's relevant to this kind of um, side gig thing I don't it, these there's these some huge treasuries across DeFi but they rarely go to them they don't actually make many payouts so this this thing that happened with the Uniswap treasury yesterday they gave 30 million dollars to Harvard University who voted for themselves to get the money so they made the proposal and then voted 10 million uni on giving themselves the money and but it was their proposal number five or something like that so what we want to be we will be able to do with our bank system is pay out thousands of people and i want that money to go to people not harvard university so i think we'll be one of the first DAOs that will genuinely pay out many thousands of people from its treasury because we have the technology to do so we need to figure out how a, how we find those thousands of people, and then what we get them to do. So at the moment, we've been like largely trying to direct people to come up with ideas for promoting the DAO, and then we, we're going to have to develop these governance systems that are self-directed, that people essentially say, I'll do this, someone goes okay, and they go and do it. But this idea of moving out to large collectives and large workforce who are remote workers and essentially digital nomads is a really powerful idea, I think. Um, really glad that's come out yeah. of it. To, to build off of that, like, we, we kept coming back to this in the podcast talk, and Matt was bringing it up a lot, actually, and I think it's a really important thing to consider in terms of uh, branding and how we want to market ourselves, the message that we want to put out about ourselves out there. And I think in this more, in this grander vision that we're, that we keep coming back to, it's like, what's the audience that we want to communicate this to? Who are the people? that would actually find that kind of message intriguing and then motivated to come participate in whatever, especially in this whole COVID and pandemic era, people are beginning to question narratives and question structures that have existed for quite some time now. And I think those kind of people would definitely be uh, intrigued by what's being built here. And I don't know what that specific, I don't know the specific demographic that those people are, but I know I've met with those kind of people. And I, I think it's pretty varying, but I think targeting those kinds of people could potentially be a good idea. So people who are fed up with the system. Or well, that's, ev- that's everybody. <laughs> it's pretty much, yeah, that's a good, <laughs> good audience there. We have broad market appeal. Broad market. Everyone who's fed up with, fed up with work, fed up with society collapsing, or maybe to narrow it down, people who are fed up but feel like there's no other option. Yeah, disempowered people. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So one of the. And I don't know how many how many countries actually have unions left. In the U.S., of course, there are unions in certain states, aren't there? Or unions are available in every state in the United States. Yeah, the union crowd is interesting. I've had many run into with them over the year in the university context. Um, yeah. Not sure I'd want to invite that crowd just yet. It's yeah. For one, I'm not sure because they tend to come from this sort of very socialist sort of thing, and the, the kind of hard money dynamic that comes with crypto probably wouldn't sit that well with them. 
Yeah, okay, okay. Um, I understand, I understand. But I, I do think this, like, it's... And, and that was the, one of the problems with unions, actually. It's like, they were very ideological. They, when they gain power, they use it. And it's not, not necessarily always for the benefit of the organisation. But necessarily, they're there to empower people. They're there to stop people being on their own. And I think there's this tension in, in crypto of, like, you are on your own. I was saying this in that your own research thing yesterday it's like you can't really trust anyone in crypto and you pro probably best not doing but DAOs as a kind of place where you can hang out for, so you're not on your own is quite interesting there's a place to feel like you're part of something with other people rather than it being this very isolated individualist sort of activity I think that's an interesting angle as well, to this to build on this kind of collective idea where you can place to make friends, build social connections. I think one of our users made a cool video the other day that talks about you build your network. And I think that's an interesting angle as well. It's a place where you can come and meet other people and make connections. So you're not on your own. Yeah, um, just let me know. So we've got about, I'm going to say, wrap this for 10 minutes so we can have a little 15 minute break for the next session. So, yeah, just shall we try and you know, just for like talking a second, I'll just let's, shall we try and get a bit of a summarizing dynamic to this? Naomi, did you take notes throughout this? Is bits that you picked out that were... We've got Naved taking notes and we've got um, some recordings going on and I've actually come up with a nice list of principles that I think will kick off our session in the afternoon. So everyone who's here is welcome to join there and I will send a kind of list and Naved and I can maybe work on that together um, as starting off point for the principles conversation and we can discuss each topic and how important and how much of a priority we think each one is. Excellent. So yeah, 10 minutes left. Is, is, is any, anyone wants to throw any more points in that will make it into this kind of principles discussion later on today? I'm sorry for interrupting you, Joseph. No, it's okay. I, I, I was just thinking like what you were saying before got me thinking like in the distant near future potentially when everybody's a part of a different kind of a DAO. It's so, all like, what does your DAO do? What does your DAO do? So I'm a part of the finance DAO vote DAO. If we do, what would be that thing that people tell them? That's a good question. It's a really good question. I'll, I'll let, I've got some ideas, but I'll let other people throw in. I still find that hard to, to explain to people it, ask me. It's yeah. Stuff. It's, it, we do a lot of stuff. It's, and that's one of the uh, challenges that we've got. Yeah, I think there's, our thing is, we, we are building the infrastructure for DAO. So it's almost like we make DAOs. That's what we do. So we've got this kind of like meta DAO dynamic. But yeah, it's a tough one. We need that to stop like corridor chat sort of thing. It's like, hey, what are you doing? And it's one of the things that I've said was important when you're defining like a research topic, for example. You need to be able to explain it to someone in a corridor chat in like one or two seconds. So I think we, so I like this idea that we're, we're building the infrastructure for DAOs. It doesn't sound that sexy. So I'm open to other ideas if anyone's got any. What I think of when you say we're building the infrastructure for DAOs, it's, it's not necessarily the community that's doing that. That's more of like a development kind of thing. And it's more like the, the business to business kind of aspect. So it's as a community member, what am I doing as a part of the finance staff of DAO? That's kind of what I was, what I was getting at. Yeah. Um, Second up, I, I guess my answer would be that, like, at least as a place to start off with, and I'm curious what other people have to say, but we are figuring out the best way to make decisions and something like this on the community side as a community member. Yeah, I've used the phrase we're building the social consensus tools, or again, it's one of those concepts that's a bit like a bit high level, it's a bit, it's a bit theoretical, but yeah, so I like the building decision-making tools to wrap in the kind of token side of things as well which so we've got like a lot of the foundation of stuff so one of the things that we've said is that we make pop-up digital democracies is another sort of angle the answers at the moment they're also like test pilots of the system in a way yeah they are so the, the way i've sort of phrased it is that we are building our own DAO so that other people can use the stuff that we've built so we're we're walking the path so that other people can so our users are the pioneering group they're always going to be at the front leading edge of the DAO space if they're they're part of our DAO and people like to be at the forefront of stuff I think people like to be pioneers so I think that's a nice angle too